bowl I made. I contoured the bottom a little bit, made it so that they'd be sitting on these four corners, got the bowl, and I made a couple of rings here that I filled with a crushed stone. Now, it's a, supposed to be a red stone, and to be honest, I'm a bit colorblind, but I don't see the red popping out at me. Maybe you do. My eyes just aren't detecting that. So I want to give you a look at how I made the blank and then how I turned that. Let's go take a look at that. Hi there. I have a slab of birch here. This has been in my shop for about 15 years now. It started off at 12 feet long. I've now got about 48 inches of usable wood left on it. It ranges from 14 inches wide on this end to 17 inches on this end and it's two and a half inches thick. It's too heavy and cumbersome to cut on my table saw, far too heavy to try to do it on my band saw, too wide to do it on my miter saw, too thick to do it with my circular saw, because it's a small one. So I'm going to try it with my reciprocating saw. Let's just see how this is going to work out. And I'm going to take a 12 inch slab off of here. All right, I should be able to work with that. All right, let's see what we ended up with here. Two and almost seven sixteenths. Two and thirteen thirty seconds of an inch. Nice slab. Didn't have to sand on both sides and get it all that flat, but I like to start with well-prepared wood. Okay, now with this cut off, I've got a very jagged edge here. So how do I go about getting straight sides on here. How do I turn this into a square? Well, the only thing I can come up with is I'm going to put it on my sled on my table saw. But the blade does not come up far enough to cut the whole thing. It's about a quarter of an inch short. So I want to make a cut straight as I can, flip it over, and make a second cut with the blade lower down until it just barely cuts the rest of what's left there. And I will eye it up by eye as long as I get that cut this side of the straight cut, I'll have that straight cut showing and I can put that against the fence on my sled so I get a square edge on the other side doing the same thing, flipping it over. Now that's going to give me two sides that are straight but not all the way through. So I can put those against the fence on my table saw without the sled, run it through and making four more cuts to get the whole thing squared up. Now that was easier said than done probably so let's go see what's going to happen when I actually try it. I have the fence set 11 and 1 eighths of an inch. I'm going to run this straight edge along there to cut this side off, and then this one to cut this off. Then I'm going to reset the distance to 10 and 1 half inches, and I'll run those newly cut sides against the fence.
And this leaves me with a blank 10 and 1 half inches square. All right, I have my square blank. I put a 3 8 inch hole right in the center of it to accommodate my woodworm screw when I mount it on the lathe. This is going to be the top of this project. So I'll mount it on there, turn the bottom, I'll put a recess in the bottom to fit my four jaw chuck when I reverse chuck it to do the top. So let's take it over to the lathe now and see what we can do with this. The outside of these two rings, the larger ring is two and a quarter inches in diameter. And that's what I'm going to do my recess at. It should fit the standard jaws on my chuck quite nicely. So I'm just going to use my parting tool to start that. This may seem obvious, but if you've never turned a square or a winged object of some kind, it's dangerous to let your hand get near these corners. You can do yourself some incredible damage. So please be careful if you're ever doing this kind of thing. It's not something to take for granted. I have raised the speed to 1000 RPM to do this cutting. Now I have to say, I don't really like cutting this way with my arm way out here. At the same time, I really don't like coming in to the edge when it's spinning. But I think we're going to have to try to do that because there's really not much control if you don't have your handle wedged against your body. That's really the best way to turn. When cutting out here, you get a lot of air time. You've got to really push down on the tool rest to keep your tool from bouncing around. Tear out. I'm going to just sharpen my gouge up again. All right, let's see if this fresh edge helps any. And it does. There's still some tear out, but much less than there was. We keep taking a little more of this away. I'm going to come in here with my quarter inch 
bowl gouge. See if I can clean this up a little bit. With this thin shaft, it's going to tend to bounce a lot more than what the 3 8 would. So I just want to stay on the inside here and do a very light cut. Still got some chip out, but this is really bouncing badly. That's not the solution to this one. That's quite a bit better. There's still tarot, but not as bad as what it was. I'm going to have to make this recess a little deeper, but when I'm finished here. All right, I'm going to make this a little deeper, and then I'm going to sand this. That should be deep enough. I'm going to put one little ring for decoration in there with the skew chisel. Okay, fine. Two rings. I'm going to drill the recess for my logo coin there. I've turned the speed down to 250 RPM. It's no use overheating the bit. All right, I'm going to go through the sanding and then I'll be back. All right, so the bottom is all sanded now and ready to go. What I want to do is reverse it, put this recess over the chuck, and what I want to do is use the 3 8 bit that I used to drill that hole to drive it on there so it stays well centered when I tighten this up. Keeps it on there nice and snug. Make sure that I've got it centered. Well, let's take a look at that. As I stand out of the way when I turn it on, just to make sure it's going to stay there, it looks like it's running true. So now I can start to turn the top. And I've measured from the top to the bottom of the recess where my logo coin goes, I have one and five eighths inch to play with here before I end up with a funnel. So I only want to go down probably an inch and a quarter tops. So now let's get turning on this. All right, I'm going to start turning the bowl. There's a knot here. I have no idea where it goes. You never know what angle they're traveling at. So I know it doesn't go all the way through. You can't see it on the other side. And so I'm hoping to turn it away, but mother nature makes these decisions as to where it is. I don't. So I'm going to be turning at 1000 RPM to start. I'm using my 3 8 inch bowl gouge.
I'm going to bring my tool rest up just a little bit. It's not looking too bad, hard to say. I think it joins up with this knot, so it may clean up quite well very shortly. Oh, I think this knot looks nice. Beautiful grain. It's not split and cracked open anywhere. Gorgeous stuff. All right, now I want to start move, moving out from the bowl toward the edge. Got a lot of air time to cut here, and I want to cut that down to less time. So I'm going to speed this up to 2000 RPM. And I'm getting a nice clean cut. Once again, to keep the tool from vibrating, I have to make sure that I push down quite hard on the tool rest. Otherwise, the little bit of air time I get will start to make it bounce a little bit, and that will give me less than clean cuts. All right, I'm finding that I'm having a hard time keeping this steady, mostly because the chips coming off here are beating the hell out of my hand. I'm gonna put on that ugly old work glove again and see what kind of difference that'll make. Much better. Makes a big difference when you're not worrying about the pain from the turning. And this seems to be matching up the curve fairly well with that. Just trying to decide how thin I want to get this. I don't want a real thin rimmed bowl. I'm going to work on it a little bit more. Quite happy with that. I think I'm going to leave that part just like that. All I need to do is sand this now. I have it sanded to 400 grit. I sanded it by using a sanding block going with the grain on this sloped area. Then I would sand inside here with just a small piece of sandpaper and then take the block again on here because I wanted to maintain this very flat. I'm quite pleased with how that came out. Then I put one coat of my sanding sealer on there, which is my mixture of zincer seal coat and methyl hydrate mixed 50-50. Now I want to create a ring 
I think I might go with two rings. I'm just thinking about that. Kind of make a moat that I'm going to fill with decorative stone. I have this crushed decorative stone. I've got white, black, and red. It's not a real vibrant red, but I kind of like it. So I think I'm going to fill it with that. Use CA glue to keep it in there. See what kind of look I can get from that. Now I put the sanding sealer on primarily because when I use the, the CA glue, I don't want it to run all over and I'm hoping the sanding sealer will prevent that. So on to the next step. All right, I've decided to go with two rings here. One between these two lines, one between these two lines. Now, if I come in here with my parting tool and just start to cut, there's a good chance that it'll fray and I'll have some sanding to do outside here again. No guarantee, but to try to prevent that, I'm going to use my skew chisel and just create lines there. And then hopefully the parting tool will take out in between here, but not outside. All right, I'll just try taking it out with the parting tool and see what happens. And I'm going to use my sharper parting tool. It's thinner and it usually does a better job. Yeah, that did a nice clean cut. All four of these cuts here are nice. I'm gonna make these just a little bit deeper and then I'll be back. All right, I'll see if I can fill these moats with this red stone without getting it everywhere. Looking for a small funnel, but I can't find it, so this is what we got. Now, as you can probably tell, I want this a little more than full. I want it mounted. It's going to have to be sanded down anyway to get it even. I'll see if I can save back a little bit of this so as not to waste too much. And my next step will be put CA glue in there. I'm using thin glue, so hopefully it will go right down through and into that moat. This is going to take me a few minutes, and then I'll be back to show you what I've got so far. All right. Got it back on the lathe. That's all mounted up there well. I don't know how this is going to sand or if I'm gonna to have to use a gouge. It's stone, I wanna keep my gouge out of there if I can. So we've got 80 grit sandpaper, dust port's ready to collect the dust. Let's see what's gonna happen here.
Well, it is taking it down, but boy, this is going to take some time by the looks of it. So I'll be back after I've got this sanded down. Well, it took a lot of sanding, but I've got this nice and flush now. It seems to have taken a bit of the color out, has added a bit of a gray tinge. I've blown it out as well as I can with compressed air, but there's still that tinge, and I'm hoping that when I coat this with mineral oil, it's going to bring that color back, make it a little darker again. But that's something I won't know until I do it, so I'm going to do that right now. And I'll be back to show you the results. And there's the finished bowl. The mineral oil did seem to make the color pop a little more in the stone. I'm not sure that it's red, but maybe you can see that better than I can. So thank you for stopping in. Hope you'll come back for the next one. I want you to have a great day in your shop. Remember to always be safe. Don't forget to subscribe. Take care of yourself. Bye now.